Tell me, do you know what day it is, Evie? Um, November the 4th. Not anymore. B for Vendetta, remember, remember, the 5th of November. This is a movie that absolutely should be on this list. Does V for Vendetta even belong on this list? No. It doesn't even belong on a superhero list. It's not a superhero comic book. You're insane. Well, is he really a superhero? He sure is the same way that Batman is a superhero. I mean, when you look at things like Batman and Rorschach, they're very similar in their methods. You know, V is just kind of a, a different take on that. What is his superpower? It's called criminal. It's a crime drama. He's a terrorist. It has no superheroes in it at all. There's nothing supernatural. There's nothing super about it. They're not even, the characters aren't even super. All of them are conflicted and are human and have problems. People who said, this isn't a comic book movie. This isn't a superhero movie. This doesn't deserve to be on the list. You're wrong. You're wrong, Schnepp. You're wrong. Should it be on this list? I don't think so, but I'm okay with it. Bollocks. What can I tell you? This is an incredibly awesome film. It's not an easy comic book to transfer into live action. To see what they did with it, uh, I was very impressed by it. Well, I mean, the character of V in the comics and the movie is very similar, almost identical, where you never see V without his mask. This is almost a Darth Vader kind of situation where I didn't need to know who was actually wearing the, the mask and the costume and all that, because Hugo Weaving's voice throughout this film is so good. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Hugo Weaving was fantastic. Of course, he's physically on screen, but the majority of it is his voice through the mask. There is a face beneath this mask, but it's not me. The fact that you don't see his face at all in the film, I think is pretty risky, and I think it's great, too, because, you know, you see a lot of superhero movies, especially with Marvel, where Cap doesn't wear his helmet or Thor doesn't wear his helmet, because they have to show off his pretty face. Hugo Weaving, not to say he's not a pretty guy, he's a good-looking guy, but I wish they did that in a lot more films. Who is but the form following the function of what, and what I am is a man in a mask. I love the introduction of the... Voila! That's just a great way to meet a character. The only verdict is vengeance. I have C been for Vendetta, and I very much regret it. V for very much regretting having gone to see it. I did see it in theaters, but I don't know if it was opening night or if it was opening weekend or weeks later. It just didn't land with me. Didn't really like it. I know when you think, uh, 20 bucks is an arbitrary number. It's not gonna ruin your life if you waste 20 bucks. When you think about it, all the 20 bucks that could have been saved by people not going to see V for Vendetta could have been donated to a charity called V for Valuable People. I don't know, just saying. Save your money, kids. Don't go see V for Vendetta. Are you like a crazy person? I feel like the, the biggest transformational character is the one played by Natalie Portman. I'm Evie. I think Natalie Portman, I think she did a fine job as Evie. I, uh, the big thing was everyone's talking about when she shaved her head for this role. She went all in for this one. When Natalie Portman does that, she is at her best. When she goes all in on a role, we don't see it all the time, but she did it in this movie, and I think that's all, one of the things I loved about it. Natalie Portman in V for Vendetta is highly forgettable. I, I don't remember her. I remember she shaved her head. You're sick! This film is more about Evie than V because it's about him passing on what it is to be a revolutionary. She goes through all kinds of torture and then it turns out that that was V the whole time just testing her. Is that right? Is this person being conditioned to think this way? He's kind of a dick for that, but honestly, like, that's, that's one of the things that makes this character so interesting. My favorite joke of this movie is when they say that James McTeague directed this. We know that the Wachowskis directed this. They directed it from start to finish. The Wachowski influence in this is, it's obvious and it's not. This came out after The Matrix, and so many films that came out after The Matrix had this kind of Wachowski flavor to it. I definitely think that this movie is a lot more exciting knowing that the Wachowskis are behind it. I think stylistically and filmmaking wise, it's, it's great. It's very similar to what they did on The Matrix, the bucking against the system. And they did this in this movie and the ending is, the ending is powerful. Honestly, for me, I, I enjoyed the film. I think the ending for me fell flat. Like everybody's putting on these masks, these V masks. That's not how the comic book ended. I felt like that ending was a little too happy and too pat for something as serious and dense as what they were dealing with. Does it have a happy ending? As only celluloid can deliver. Personally, V for Vendetta, I would put 
a lot lower on the list or remove it completely. Well, I can tell you V for Vendetta is one of my favorite comic book movies. And, and, I, and the fact that it's number 31 is ridiculous. So I have to put it in the top 20. So I, I think it belongs there. V for Vendetta at 31, I really like this film. Definitely deserves to be on the list. V for Vendetta is one of those movies that like, when you start having a couple of beers with your friends and you debate what the best comic book movie of all time is, somebody is inevitably gonna throw V for Vendetta up there. And maybe because it's that high on this list, I need to take them at their word and I need to go watch V for Vendetta.